You are listening to Future Voices, a podcast brought to you by Beha Futures Foundation. Our next guest is Katarina Urošević. Uh, absolutely incredible career. I'm going to try and provide a short summary of what she's been up to uh, and, of course, what she's achieved in a relatively short time in her career. So she's a graduate from the Mathematics High School in Serbia. As many of you know, it's one of the most prolific schools producing some of the greatest mathematicians, ph physicists and engineers that the world has seen. And of course, that led her on to Princeton University, one of the most prestigious academic institutions in the world, where she graduated with a Bachelor of Arts majoring in physics. That's a unique combination. We'll find out more about that later on. But of course, uh, what's most unique and interesting about Katarina is that she came back to Serbia to do some pretty incredible things. And she's worked in innovation uh, throughout her career. She's managed a lot of different projects. She's worked as a project manager at the Innovation Fund in Serbia. She was the scientific coordinator uh, at a project implementation research and development. Uh, she was a policy analyst in Paris for a while. Uh, she worked at the World Bank, science innovation consultant for four and a half years. And finally, she landed in a role which we believe uh, is probably one of the most important ones because she's helping lead the next unicorn uh, in the region. And she's the chief of staff and the director of corporate communications at H Tech Group. Katarina, welcome to Futures Voices. Thank you, Eddie. Well, I have to say I've read online so many things about you, but one thing that stood out is a lifelong devotee to research innovation. Katarina has spent the better part of her professional work designing and implementing strategies and policy instruments that would enable companies like H Tech to grow. So I'm very interested to know uh, what is H Tech all about? Uh, well, good morning, Eddie. Thank you for this introduction. First of all, uh, sounds a lot more impressive when you say it. <laughs> Uh, but uh, also thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today and uh, for the question about HTEC. Um, so to answer your question, uh, first of all, HTEC Group is one of the fastest growing technology companies in Southeast Europe. Um, I think what's uh, super exciting uh, for our listeners today is to know that HTEC started as a startup here in Belgrade in Serbia in one of the incubators that was uh, created at the technical faculties of the University of Belgrade. And so the founders who um, you know, are both, uh, uh, both university graduates here from Serbia started the small company, which has now 10 years later grown to be uh, really a global technology powerhouse with over a thousand employees and with its clear mark on both the European and the US market when it comes to delivering top-notch engineering services to some of the leading companies in the world. Um, so yes, fast growing technology company, uh, that's based here in the region, uh, but works with some of the biggest companies in the world, both technology companies, but also industrial giants in, in various sectors. And we're always fascinated when companies from our region uh, are attempting to break international markets and do something quite incredible, which is make it from our region in uh, well-established markets. And HTEC is certainly doing that already and is going to definitely grow uh, at an incredible rate. Uh, we're also interested in knowing, you know, the brain gain, the brain drain uh, game. We, we always talk about this in our particular region. You came back after your education. You're definitely not the only one that's come back when it comes to HTEC. From what we know, many of the engineers who HTEC employs and also the other employees uh, also come from international markets. And that just is an attestment to the fact that HTEC is truly a global organization. But can you tell us a little bit about this whole brain gain uh, approach that HTEC has taken in terms of acquiring the best talent in the region, but also looking beyond the region for the recruitment of talent? I think, you know, um, the question of brain drain in this region is, is both uh, serious and extremely complex. Uh, for me personally, I felt after, after finishing university in the States and working in Canada for a bit uh, uh, as a research assistant, um, I felt the opportunity was there. And I felt that if I came back to Serbia, I would be able to do some amazing things. And uh, I've not been proven wrong. Um, I've uh, been able to develop a, a pretty exciting career and do some interesting things uh, here in Belgrade. 
And I think my position now, as you mentioned in the introduction, is really one of the biggest opportunities I've ever had and one of the most exciting moments uh, in my career so far. Uh, when it comes to when it comes to age tech, there is a lot of people who have also returned from from various uh, careers abroad, both in Europe and the U.S., to work in the company. And I think what is crucial uh, for these decisions uh, for people is the ability to work on projects and to work on technologies and complex topics uh, that are uh, equally as interesting and equally as challenging as uh, they would have the opportunity to do elsewhere. So what is, I think, unique about HTEC, even though there's a lot of companies in this region, and, and thank God many of them are extremely successful in bringing engineering projects to this region and engaging uh, local engineering talent uh, to work on them, what I think is unique about HTEC is our ability uh, to work on extremely complex projects and to work on core technologies for some of the biggest companies. You know, we, we sometimes... Uh, uh, you know, when we're talking to potential clients and, and, and our entry ticket to work with them is telling them, give us your most challenging project. Give us something that your engineers are not able to do and let us prove ourselves on that. And then when once you do that, you are in and you can work on some uh, uh, exciting things. So when it comes to uh, when it comes to building your career here, um, you have to have the ability to work on things that are interesting and you have to have a clear uh, career path and ability to grow and constantly uh, constantly learn new things. And with HTEC working with over 80 clients in, in pretty much every sector that you can imagine and on every possible technology, you have the possibility to not only do that here, but also do it within HTEC. So, you know, work on you know, uh, the second biggest uh, project for the second biggest shipping company in the world, developing their platform for monitoring and optimizing uh, uh, the routes of, of uh, container ships across the globe. And then after a few years, completely switch and, and stay in HTEC and work on, you know, an exciting med tech project for a startup in, in Minnesota, for example. Um, so just the multitude of projects we have and our ability to work not just on software development, but also interesting hardware projects, uh, embedded uh, systems and so on, uh, I think is what really draws people in, uh, but also lets them develop their careers in, in a way that's very gratifying and, um, and keeps, them, keeps them here. Yeah, definitely one of the most diverse portfolios in terms of companies in the tech industry, uh, perhaps not even in South, uh, in Southeastern or Europe, we're talking about the wider region it's it's rare for a company to be so diverse and i think that makes it one of the more exciting places to come and work because you don't really know uh where you might end up within the organization as well it sounds like a great place to work and i'm sure you're having a lot of fun helping the company grow i just wanted to go step back and ask about the founders uh, the founders uh, one of them is from Beneluca and the other one is from uh, Herzegovina from Mostar from what we know can you tell us just a little bit you've met them you you know them quite well uh, what are the founders like and how did they actually come about, you know, launching this company from its humble beginnings to where it is today, a truly regional giant? I, I, I only joined the company a year ago, but I've known the founders for more than 10 years. Um, I think uh, uh, maybe I can illustrate their uh, personality best if I tell you about the day that I actually met them. So. Uh, I was working in the Ministry of Science here in Serbia uh, in the office of the Deputy Prime Minister, who was then in charge of science. And we were trying to convince for, for quite some time the World Bank to kind of invest in innovation in Serbia, that there is an exciting uh, ecosystem of startups. And we really wanted to do a project with them because there was not enough financing here from, from public sources. So the delegation came in from Washington, it was five or six people, and we decided to take them uh, to this incubator where HTEC was also uh, founded at the time. Um, so I brought this delegation to the incubator. There were maybe seven or eight startups there at the time. Uh, I introduced the, the delegation to each of the startups and among them also introduced them to, to Alex and Dushan who were there, uh, who were there representing HTEC. Um, I have to say, from from moment one, they stood out. So uh, you know, you have uh, you have a couple of startups there that are meeting a delegation of the World Bank that wants to invest in Serbia, and they were the ones who actually, I believe, <laughs> convinced the World Bank 
that there is something exciting here, that there are opportunities and that they really should support a project uh, which later became the Innovation Fund in Serbia and uh, several instruments for financing, um, for seed financing of startups in the country. What was really exciting is that they automatically also saw the opportunity to do other things. So they approached me uh, with their wish to establish the Serbian Business Angels Network and we worked together uh, on that. So they were a really proactive member of, of the ecosystem. Uh, constantly with ideas on how to move forward. Um, like I said, they established the Serbian Business Angels Network, but within one year, Alex was in the board of uh, the European Business Angels Network. And through those connections there, was actually able to uh, also help grow HTEC and, uh, and meet some exciting European companies and get some of the first bigger clients that HTEC had. This is now, I'm talking, you know, 10, eight to 10 years ago. Um, so there really was a vision and there really was this kind of drive to maximize uh, every opportunity in front of them. Um, I mean, a lot of <laughs> hard work uh, that they put in to building this company, uh, but also a strong team and, and generating kind of this, uh, this amazing team atmosphere where everybody feels uh, uh, very independent in the things they're doing. There is not a lot of hierarchy. There's not a lot of waiting for decisions to be made. Uh, but they chose to work with people who they trust enough to, to make decisions on their own and to drive this business on their own. And so there is really, um, it is the founders, but there's also a wider team of people who have been here for quite some time and who have built this company to what it is today. Yeah, the company culture is one of the, I guess, probably is the most important aspect of any organization. It sounds like the foundation was very solid with the right mindset, with the right approach and the growth as a result of that has been uh, relatively organic as well. They say that nothing brings two uh, people together like business. Uh, nothing brings countries together and regions together like business. And HTEC is certainly doing that. You have offices all over the region. And we're particularly on this podcast interested in the work that you're doing in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And so we know that you have an office in Banja Luka. Uh, there's some other offices uh, being opened up or planned. Can you tell us a little bit more about your work in Bosnia and Herzegovina at the moment? Of course, Eddie. Um, so after after establishing several uh, uh, development centers in Serbia, obviously the first one was Belgrade, but quickly after that, uh, Niš and Novi Sad, later on Kragovac and Subatica, the first office that HTEC established outside of Serbia was in Banja Luka, and this was uh, two years ago, uh, exactly. In the meantime, uh, our team in Banja Luka has grown to be over 80 engineers, uh, and uh, what is, uh, I think, perhaps also uh, exciting to say is that this year, uh, beyond Banja Luka, we also established development centers in Tuzla, Sarajevo, and Bjerina. Um, there is really strong potential uh, in Bosnia. We've already seen that on the example of, of Banja Luka, but not just that. Our office in Tuzla was established uh, less than three months ago, and we already have an incredible team there uh, that, are, uh, that are putting their first marks and their contributions to some exciting projects. I think, you know, with this pandemic, perhaps uh, the process of, of uh, distributing uh, teams and distributing projects has maybe been sped up a bit. Uh, but I think that's actually a really good thing because now we really don't hire per location. So every opportunity that exists in HTEC, every position that exists in HTEC is filled with the best candidate in wherever location we are. So people in Tuzla or Sarajevo or Bjedina have exactly the same opportunity as do our colleagues now in Skopje or Seged or Belgrade or wherever we, we are present. So uh, I think this, this is really, really good for everybody. Um, when it comes to Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, we want to further expand these offices in terms of the number of people, and number of colleagues joining us, uh, but also to do more uh, for the, the local ecosystem and environment. Uh, just this week, we signed a collaboration agreement with the University of Banja Luka, and we've already been talking to, uh, to the technical faculties in Tuzla as well uh, to kind of expand our presence in these countries, not just in, in hiring uh, engineers and designers and other talent, but really working with the local, especially research community and, and university community on building new talent for the future and bringing some interesting research projects to the academic community as well. I'm so excited to hear that you are much more deeply involved than one would anticipate a company to be involved in. You're doing what's good for the company, but most importantly, you're also doing what's good for the community and the country and the economic uh, ecosystem as well, which leads us to the next point, Tuzla. 
uh, Futures Leaders Summit. As you know, it's uh, an event that we've been organizing since 2016. We've had some disturbances as a result of COVID, but nothing that's going to stop us uh, in the meantime. We want to thank HTEC for becoming a platinum partner of this year's Congress, which will be held in Tuzla. It's kind of worked out quite well that you are establishing an office in Tuzla, that you're expanding, that you're speaking to the technical faculties there as well. We're also very excited that you are opening up additional offices and investing further in the community. Uh, what we want to know a little bit from you is um, what can we expect from HTEC at Futures Leaders Summit? Because as a platinum partner and also as a, as a result of your initiative, you're involved in every aspect of the Congress, but tell us a little bit about what you've got planned and what you're going to deliver for the students that will be there. Um, yeah, thank you for this question, Eddie. First of all, uh, we've been following uh, the, the, the foundation and your activities for quite some time. So uh, actually, we're grateful for the opportunity to, to sponsor and support this event and, and be part of also planning it and, and seeing what kind of uh, value we can bring to the students and everybody who will be uh, uh, attending. Uh, we've discussed uh, with uh, with you and the other organizers as well, and I think we're bringing uh, really our, our A team to to support the event, but also uh, to share some experiences and and knowledge with everybody who will be present. So our VP of uh, Engineering and Delivery, Darko Todorovic, will be giving a keynote speech and kind of highlighting some of the the trends when it comes to technology development and, and uh, um, engineering services that we've seen over the past years. I think this will be quite an exciting lecture for everybody to, to understand not just what HTEC is doing, but also where the opportunity lies globally. Um, beyond this, uh, our VP of People Operations, uh, Sergei Yovanovich, will be participating in a panel uh, which I think is quite important, and I'm really glad that you've already thought about organizing this type of panel. Uh, students will be able to hear more about how to develop uh, their careers. So, you know, we've already mentioned so far that there is a lot of opportunity in this region. Uh, thankfully, the IT sector is growing and companies are, uh, more companies are present and the ones that were established here are growing and becoming stronger uh, every day. Uh, so the opportunity is there, uh, but sometimes as a student, uh, you're not uh, aware of these opportunities and maybe early on in your career, you can kind of um, either focus too early or simply uh, not understand how best to develop and how best to, to assess the companies that are kind of interviewing you in terms of uh, whether they will be able to take care of you in providing you with the adequate uh, trainings and the adequate uh, kind of uh, career development processes. So I think this will be a really important panel for students to understand what are some of the key things they need to consider uh, when launching their uh, careers in, in engineering in particular. Um, additionally, uh, we are preparing an exciting workshop. I think this is, a, this is also great in such a big setup and summit to have the opportunity to kind of focus and sit in a room with you know, 20 to 30 students and do really hands-on uh, work. So we will be giving them a challenge, uh, uh, very similar to the type of challenges that we get from our clients and, and putting them in uh, teams to work and to kind of really brainstorm around the problem, how they would solve it from both an engineering perspective, but also having an understanding of what the business challenges are as well and presenting their solutions to us at the end of this kind of uh, technical workshop. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, be giving out some small prizes as well. Um, so I think, you know, overall, it's really an opportunity to bring people together, uh, to hear about the opportunities that exist and to learn from kind of the experiences of people who have already been there and done that. So um, I think it'll be exciting for students to hear some of the decisions that HTEC had to make along the way. Uh, one of the interesting ones is, you know, um, being a product company versus a services company, kind of how that decision took place. And, and there's always this kind of um, desire to develop your own products and, and what are the pros and cons of that. And if you want to go into developing a kind of a product business, uh, what do you have to consider and what you want, what you have to consider if you're developing, uh, developing an engineering services business as well. Uh, so I think a lot of interesting topics ahead of us, uh, but really uh, grateful for to you for being able to bring this kind of exciting group of people together, uh, also challenging uh, to bring them together in a physical space in these times. Uh, and it will be really nice to see everybody and be able to talk to students in person and share some experiences. I'm so super excited about the event. So much amazing stuff going on offer. 
Uh, I don't think there's a student uh, out there that will listen to this and not be uh, looking for any way to reach Tuzla to, to <laughs> participate in these events. We hope some of the content we'll be able to make available uh, online as well, post event. So those that couldn't attend for restrictions as a result of COVID, they'll be able to still get some form of interaction. But it sounds like, as you said, you're bringing uh, the A team for the A game. And I think that means a lot for everyone that's listening to this. Uh, Katarina, as last uh, little bit of information that we want from you as a sort of final remark, uh, a, a sort of key message that you want to send to young people, not only in Bosnia and Herzegovina, but the whole Western Balkan region, let's say the, the place where we speak the same language, but call it different things. Uh, key message for all of them that are listening to this podcast regarding HTEC. I think uh, perhaps the key message and, and maybe uh, something I've learned over uh, my uh, one year in HTEC now is, is this thing I mentioned that really stood out about our, par our, our founders when I met them, and that is uh, maximize every opportunity. Uh, so really, don't be scared to put yourself out there to try things that are, you know, challenging, uh, that you're not even sure that you're able to accomplish, but to really drive yourself early on in your career uh, to expand your skills and to learn different things. Um, I think this is, uh, this is a good message for young people. Uh, with uh, with HTEC growing uh, and hiring uh, over 60 new people each month and, and will slowly uh, be even increasing that number to hiring about 100 people each month, uh, there really is an opportunity, but when choosing your first jobs and, and when you're developing your careers, you have to really assess the companies that you want to work with. Uh, you have to look whether there is a career path, whether the company is investing in career development, and whether there is growth, because without growth, uh, a career path is only a, a piece of paper. Uh, with growth, there is uh, the possibility to grow your career as well within the company and to be part of a team that is doing something big together. What really makes it exciting for me is that we are literally a team of a thousand people working together and driving together uh, towards a bigger goal. And that's an exciting feeling. Well, there you have everyone. Kat Katarina Urosevic from HTEC. Uh, you've, you've heard what they're bringing to Tuzla. Uh, you definitely want to be at Futures Leaders Summit from the 15th to the 17th of December at the Bosnian Cultural Center in Tuzla. Katarina, thank you so much for this time and this podcast. Unfortunately, we have to cut things short. Would have loved to talk to you more about what you're up to, but I guess that gives us more reasons to have another podcast in more detail and discuss some of the exciting projects that you guys are involved in. Exactly. Thank you, Eddie, so much and see you in Tuzla very soon.